Hi everyone, welcome back to the Perkins Custom Swim Bait channel here on YouTube. You know, today we're going to have a video of a tournament that my uncle and I competed in with the TNCBA uh, Bass Club. We had a real good tournament. We ended up actually finishing in third place throughout the day. Um, didn't really get on a big bait bite that day, but we had a lot of fun, caught a lot of fish. And here's the footage from that day. And stick around after this footage and we're gonna hop into what baits we use to catch the fish. I'm working. That come on. That fish is bait shallow. Yeah. Yeah, I got him. That's a good one. Right on that rock. Yeah, we do. Yeah, uh, he should keep. That should be over. I think it's 15 on a large mount. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a 15. Got him.
Yeah, that's what I was noticing. That's what I'm concerned about right up here. Get on this deeper rock. There he is. Uh, no, that's a square bill. Uh, that's one I painted. I think that one will do better than that other one. I know, I mean, it's dirt shallow. I mean, that's how deep, or that's how shallow that crankbait's running. Go ahead and measure. That one's 18. They're getting bigger. Is that a dead shad right here? Or a dying shad? You see it on the surface? Yeah, you got him. Good job. Be another, what do you think, 16, 17? Uh, he's, a, he's 15, I wouldn't really tell. Yeah, he's good. I'm showing he is. He's on the line. Okay. Do that again. I think it's 15 and a half. Either way, I got him on the line. He's on the line. His nose. Yeah. He's good. One more. One more. This one. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'll show it to you. I'm gonna put some on my uh -uh. No, it ain't chartreuse. Very long. I have a hit. I did. There's your small mouth, Paul. Gonna have them, that sure ain't gonna keep. Paul, need it. Good catch. I don't know how big he is. Yeah, he ain't huge. Come on, baby, measure for us. That's all. That's every day, all day. He's good. There's number five. We got us a limit. Might have to fit, flip that aerator on real quick. There we go. All right, welcome back. Thank y'all for watching today's video. I really do appreciate it. So let's go ahead and get kicked off as to some of the baits that we were using to be able to catch those fish that day and finish in third place. So first and foremost, I'm gonna go over my uncle's uh, setups that he was using. So number one, he was using a double willow spinnerbait, uh, caught most of his fish on that spinnerbait. Uh, I think that he was using 15 to 16 pound fluorocarbon line on a uh, medium heavy uh, spinnerbait rod with I think just a normal six to one gear ratio reel. And then his other setup that he was catching some fish on was a shallow running jerkbait. So this jerkbait was more of a floating jerkbait that he would rip and dive down just a little bit. And that's what you saw that one keeper that we got uh, caught on. So for myself, what I was throwing that day was a square bill. So this is actually a knockoff square bill. I ended up painting this bait myself. Uh, this is one of my paint jobs, uh, but this is based on the Mega Bass S crank. So it runs only about that really shallow three to four foot zone on what I've got running here. I am running that on the G Loomis E6X uh, cranking rod. This is the 845 model, I think. Yeah, the 845 cranking rod. Uh, this is a great rod. I've had this rod for several years. I typically use this mainly for like my spooks uh, or walking topwaters. Um, reel, I'm running 50 pound braid as my main line to a 20 pound, um, excuse me, not 20, to a 12 pound copolymer leader here. Uh, I didn't run fluorocarbon on the crankbait. I really, you know, as many rocks as you saw that we were bumping and grinding, I ended up staying with the copolymer because I ended up cutting off about a foot of line every couple of hours or so to make sure I was running good line. And then lastly is the reel itself. This is the Daiwa Tatula Coastal. It's got the SV uh, spool on it. It's a 150 size. It's a great reel. Really enjoyed it. It's a brand new reel for me, actually. I picked this up because I wanted to use it for some of my glide baits. So I actually picked this up in the eight to one gear ratio. So it's a burner reel, uh, but had no issues with the fish keeping up with that little square bill and had a great time throwing that. All right, last up is a technique that I personally don't fish a lot. 
And that's jig fishing. I'm not a huge jig fisherman. Uh, I tell most people I'm not a huge fan of throwing a jig. Uh, but I'll tell you, you know, when they're on it, it's a lot of fun to catch some fish on. So what I ended up doing is I, I didn't really throw a traditional jig. Um, what I actually threw was the Mega Bass Sleeper Crawl. So it is just a jig, but it's a little different. I mean, it's fully enca encapsulated in like this kind of a Laztec material, I guess, that Mega Bass uses. Uh, but it's a great little jig. I, I really enjoyed throwing it and uh, caught some really nice fish on it. I think I caught, I had two on, or I, I missed one and then I caught the two. But um, so just is what it is. Throwing that also on that 12 pound copolymer, I'm really liking that. Still going on that braid deleter. It's got 50 pound braid as backing on here. Um, I wanna say it's just normal Power Pro on there. And then for the rod, it's a seven foot one medium heavy. This is the Kronos. Um, you know, it's one of Daiwa's older model uh, rods, but it's a fantastic worm and jig rod. This is my dedicated worm and jig rod and reel. Um, the reel is the Daiwa Zillion. Uh, this is the six three to one Zillion. Um, so just a moderate. I also throw spinner baits on this. So it's just a good all around combo to be able to throw between a jig or a spinner bait and I can capture either one. So overall, this is really the, uh, the two major things that we were doing, um, or I guess really four techniques. So spinner bait, shallow square bill crankbait, um, jig or sleeper crawl, however you'd like to put that, and then the jerk bait. That's really what it, what we ended up doing. The bass were really heavily located on super shallow rocks, so anywhere from zero to about three foot deep, they were not deep at all. Um, the jig, I mean, it was only a couple of hops off the bank and I was able to find some fish with it. The square bill, same deal. I mean, as soon as you come over a rock and you clear it, they were just typically right there. So that's kind of how we did it. Um, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, please feel free to drop those down below. Please give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Really appreciate you taking time to watch today's video. Next video, you know, we're going to be getting back out on the water. Got another tournament coming up. Uh, this one, it's going to be a cold front, definitely. Uh, there's a cold front pushing through, so the high that day is probably going to be in the low to mid 40s. So who knows as to what it's going to be. So uh, stick around. That video hopefully will be out in uh, either next week or the following week. And then we'll kind of get into some more of our swim baiting again. But, you know, uh, if I don't get to talk to you before then, I hope you have a great, happy Thanksgiving. I will see you in the next video. Just remember the
watching you